Uh, yeah, I think it's good afternoon now. <laughs> um, I'd like, I'm, I'm Chile, so I'm a lecturer in the department, so I, I just want to briefly introduce myself. So I, I come, originally come from China, so I did my PhD in Cambridge in the um, chemical engineering, and I moved to the physics department, the Cavendish lab, to work on a poly polymer membrane project. Then I uh, moved to Imperial College. I joined here as a junior research fellow with Andrew Livingstone, Professor Andrew Livingstone. So uh, after two years time, so now I, um, the department keep, uh, promote me as a lecturer. So I am feeling very excited to join the center to work together uh, on the cutting edge membrane research. So today I'm going to briefly talk about the, uh, our recent work because I, I'm still, I haven't got PhD students, but I have to talk about my work I did during my PhD and also uh, my postdoctoral research. So this uh, really exciting area about the um, new generation of polymers that have intrinsic microporosity. So I, I want to start from, because we have people from the industry, we also have people from the industry. I want to uh, start from the problem first in the industry, the gas separation membranes. So the conventional gas separation membranes, for example, these are following the solution diffusion model. So the membranes, are made of polymers that are dense, they don't have intrinsic amount of porosity, they, they have linear polymer chain, alternatively they cross link, so they're rel relatively dense. So the, the, the separation are based on the, the molecules, the gas molecules that should dissolve in the polymer membrane and then they diffuse through the membrane, so then you can separate them. But we are working on the next generation polymers that you have the defined pore size, kind of like a zeolite, so you can separate them by the shape, by the size of these molecules. So why, why is this important? Because if you look at the commercial membranes, like the gas separation membranes, or they, first, they, fabricate, they can fabricate into different modules, like flesh or hollow fibers. But the intrinsic selective layer are made by the very thin, like uh, 100 nanometer um, polymers. But the, in, the internal physical property of these polymers determine the function separation applications. So, if you look at these polymers, they are currently being used by industry. It's still very limited type, like the, the, since the early start of cellulose acetate. So currently the second generation is polyimide. So these are very limited amount of polymers being used in industry. So we need to look at, at the university, we're looking at the next generation materials. For example, the, uh, um, they can give high permeability and high selectivity. So why I'm pointing to this? Because if you think about the, for example, the carbon capture process, so that's currently being developed by the MTR, for example. They, the gas permeance should be really pushed to the next level because, for example, the commercial, currently the commercial polymers, they have relatively low selective permeability like a thin barrier. The, they, I need to mention that the barrier is the unit of gas separation, the gas permeability. It's named after Bar Richard Barry. This is a, actually, it was the first time I know, okay, this is uh, something that once you become established in the field of research, you're, you're going to, um, people name you after the unit. So I uh, feel really like uh, we should develop something that is. But for, the, for our target performance, for example, the gas separation membranes, we want to push that to, uh, we want to push the permeability to the next level. For example, two or three magnitudes high. So we can scale up the membrane separation process. And to do this, actually, we're looking at a new generation of porous materials. For example, the, we talk about the, um, um, Camille and Brad talk about the MOVs material. But I'm looking at the polymers that have intrinsic microporosity. So these polymers, they, uh, they term as micropolymers or intrinsic microporosity. So actually this type of polymer, uh, it was invented by uh, Peter Bart and uh, Neil McKeown at Manchester University uh, 12 years ago, uh, actually even 13 years ago. So uh, it has been developed like um, 10 years by many groups in the world. So um, we, we, we still, they haven't, the first commercialization of this polymer uh, has been achieved in the sensor, for example, the um, gas mask. But we are looking for uh, some other areas. But I'm, I'm going to talk about how to design, how to synthesize this polymer. For example, this polymer chain is a long molecule. It's like the noodles, for example. You have different building blocks, so you link them together, and then you form like this long chain molecules. But the conventional polymers, they're very, very flat molecules. But these polymers, they synthesize by using the 
rigid contorted monomers. So when you link them, you incorporate this kind of angles into the polymer chain. You form this kind of um, contorted molecules. And the, and the chemistry of these molecules are very versatile. So they and recently, for example, New McCune's group that develops a new TB polymer. It also gives very rigid type of ladder-like polymers. So to visualize that, you may, you may not imagine like what is the polymer like. I want to show you the, uh, this famous example, how to visualize this. This is kind of like a conventional polymer. It's like the uh, uh, spagnet. So it's very linear, it's linear polymer chain, but uh, in a solid state, when you pack them, they, uh, they can pack densely. But these are the, this new generation, this is like some other uh, pasta, some other Italian noodles. Uh, they, they look like, they, uh, they, when you pack them, so because they shape, because of the, uh, the geometry, so they can't pack efficiently. So when you think about at a molecular level, it's very similar. So when this polymer chain, when they are packed together, so if the polymer chain are contorted, they cannot pack together so efficiently, so they form a space between them. So um, because this, uh, for us, because we are chemical engineers, so I mean, think about the, the chemists that can design these molecules for different structure, with different structures. But as a chemical engineer, uh, our responsibility is to, for example, we can fabricate these Italian noodles into a different shape. We can cook dishes. We can sell them. So we can make the product so you can have the, um, uh, the food. So um, there are many approaches to cook these polymers. So you can modify these polymers. Um, you can uh, modify the functional groups. So this is work done by um, Michael Gowers, Professor Gowers group. So they hydrolyze this. They form like a hydrogen bonding networks. So there's another famous work by Professor Guyver's group is they, in, uh, they change the, um, uh, nitro, the um, nit nitride groups to tetral groups. So these new functional groups have high affinity with the polymer, with carbon oxide. So this can be used for carbon oxide separation. And there's also a cross-linking approach. Um, so you can cross-link a polymer, uh, linear polymer to network polymer. So this stabilizes the polymer from aging and uh, stability in solvents. So uh, now I go to my, uh, my previous work is I modify the polymer. So we fabricate the PIM polymer. So we, we try several different approaches. So because I was not a chemist, I found it difficult to synthesize the polymer myself. But then I did some work on the, for example, the chemical modification and also the thermal chemical modi um, cross-linking. So this is our work uh, on the um, PIM polymer. We synthesize the PIM, PIM polymer. I, as I said, we cook it. So we bake it at, in the oven at a uh, close to 400 degrees. If you think about it, um, all the polymer, all the plastics, if you heat that up to 400 degrees, they will degrade. So we found that actually this degradation helps to cross-link the polymer to make it more selective. So the, uh, to show that, uh, I want to show that. So for example, these are the polymers being cross-linked. They have been heated up um, at 385 degrees for uh, overnight for 24 hours. They're still flexible and then still maintain the flexibility of polymer, but actually they have been cross-linked. So they become stable in the solvent as well. So it doesn't become, it become insoluble in chloroform. So, and the most important finding is we found that because of the cross-linking of the polymer, so the, the PM1 polymer, the selectivity of the carbon dioxide to methane now increase remarkably high to like 50 to 60. So this is relevant to the industry because for natural gas purification for carbon dioxide separation from nitrogen. So the selectivity should be around 20, 30, or 40. So they have sufficient selectivity, otherwise the membrane cannot be used. So with our method, we can cross-link the polymer so they become selective enough for industrial application. And also the permeability are uh, two or three uh, in a magnitudes higher than the conventional polymers. And also I want to talk about some other approach. Um, we, uh, we, this is collaboration with um, Professor Livingstone's group. So, Apart from the uh, linear polymers, we can also make a polymer nanofilm by in situ polymerization. So this collaboration with Maria, Maria is here. So they, uh, uh, so they have been, uh, we have been working on this for a while. So they, 
we took two monomers. They, instead of linking them into linear polymer chain, actually we can form a cross-link network. So this is the network by, but uh, the, a new approach is we adopting these monomers that have been used for the uh, conventional PIM material. So we can form, uh, this reaction is really simple. So you, you, you have an aqueous phase, you have an organic phase. If you um, put the two solutions together, there's a phase separation that's immiscible. So that uh, a, a very thin polymer thin film is formed at the interface. So you can isolate the polymer uh, nanofilm. You can support it on the, uh, some other polymer support or inorganic support. You can test the, um, use that for different ap separation applications. So this is the SEM image. You can see that this is a very homogeneous, nice polymer thin film supported on the um, ceramic membranes. And we test the gas separation. We also, we did quite a lot of gas absorption, uh, absorption to understand how the free volume in the polymer corresponds to the, uh, uh, the separation because it's essentially it's molecular transport is related to the internal cavities. So, and also we, we demonstrated the organic solvent nanofiltration work. So we show that if you introduce the microporosity in the polymer, you can enhance the permeance of the solvent by two or three magnitudes high than the conventional uh, dense polymers. So, and this is a collaboration with Kim Jeffs in chemistry department. So uh, this uh, Kim did some modeling to show that the in, in introducing the rigid contorted monomers into the polymer network, you do have a uh, very significant enhancement of the porosity. And this helps to, um, um, to speed up the transport of molecules and also um, uh, gas molecules. So, I mean, the, this uh, actually I found this, this really exciting because the collaboration with Kim Jeffs, the visa, chemistry with the modeling people, these are one of the important component elements in our center. So in the future, we're going to collaborate, we keep our center open. So we're going to collaborate with our, um, all those people with different expertise because we are, we are chemical engineers. We are not really uh, material scientists or chemical uh, or chemists. So we want to connect, collaborate with um, other people. So, um, okay, back to the uh, porous polymer. Actually, we are, I'm talking about some other directions currently we are working on. So when the area is, we, talk, we are talking about the porous polymers. We, we hear a lot about people talking about porosity, the separation, but we really haven't incorporated the functionality. So this is one area we want to think about. So we, we uh, currently we uh, prepare a manuscript uh, for submission to some other journals. So the, uh, the idea is we can uh, define the functionality of the polymer by uh, introducing the monomers with different structure. We, we can define the structure, for example, we can use in uh, new generation of triptycin like monomers to build the porous uh, PIM material. And also we can introduce the, um, some other functionality like electrochemical reaction, reactivity or some other chirality. So this is work we are submitting soon. And uh, the other areas we continue the working on the linear polymers, but we're looking at how to fabricate for example, we can synthesize, if we can synthesize this material, we can in, in uh, we should just talk about we can synthesize a hundred gram scale. We can fabricate it in, in large modules of, for gas or for other areas. And I want to show that because um, Rich, for example, Rich uh, talked about the separation because most of the polymer membranes we do in the lab are polymer films. They're not really uh, thin films. But I want to show that, for example, if you cut the PIM1, uh, it's a thin film cut on the uh, ceramic support you have like 200, 300 nanometer on the um, on ceramic spot. It does give very high permeance, like the initial permeance is like a 6,000 GPU. But if you think about conventional um, commercial polymers, they only give like several hundred GPU or even below 100. But even, the, uh, even if you reduce the thickness down to 50 nanometers, so you wouldn't push the permeance further. But in this case, so the initial permeance, it is quite high. It is much higher than the conventional polymers. So even, but it do edge, the, the physical edging. So after overnight, if you keep the um, sample overnight, so it decreased to about 2,500 GPU. So that, that is a problem that we are looking at, how to stabilize these materials. But 
Apart from the gas separation, we are looking, uh, also looking at some other areas. So this is some uh, work done by our master students. So uh, we, we found that if you have like a PME ATB, it is very good gas separation membranes. But actually, it also uh, works for desalination uh, applications. For example, here you can selectively and, um, uh, reject different ions with different hydration diameters. And this is, uh, the problem also have some aging issue. If, if you leave the membranes for several hours, it does decrease, the permeance decrease, but eventually it may stabilize at some point. So um, I think the, the idea is, um, because if you look at the desalination membranes, reverse osmosis membranes, currently all, every drop of the water you're drinking, actually most of them have been purified by the membranes. But the, this is actually very important for some other, uh, for the global um, desalination uh, and also water purification process. So we're looking at it, but I'm thinking about it in our lab, so we can develop the next generation uh, membranes that have um, um, kind of like, a, I'm gonna show you here, the, the biomimetic design. So this is the, uh, I took this from the Nobel Prize ion, water and ion channels. So for example, you can introduce this new generation design like the molecular dimension pores into the polymer and also the functional groups, for example, the TB groups that has interaction with the water molecules. So I, I think that there may be some still new polymers that may be um, um, introduced a new breakthrough in the um, water purification membranes. So um, well, the, um, the target, uh, the strategy of our work, our, our center, I can imagine that. So it is the develop the polymer, we synthesize the polymer. We also fabricate the polymer into a hollow fiber or flash sheet. We're looking at commercial applications. So that is, um, to, uh, that is my, my last slide. So uh, thank you very much.